Welcome, everybody, to the show. Again, I'm joining you in the middle of the day, which can only mean that we have someone very exciting to talk to, and we do very much so today. Today, I'm going to be joined by Jerry Miner. Jerry, I'm going to build, I'm build your, uh, your ego up right now. Jerry's a very, <laughs> a very talented man, very talented. The kind of man I look at, and I'm like, to hell with this dude, because I'm <laughs> envious of him. Um, y- you are a comedian, you're a singer, you're an actor you you know you've seen you've you've seen jerry minor before people you've seen jerry on saturday night live you've probably seen him on 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 television somewhere and now you can find jerry in his latest stage production of for the love of a glove y'all heard me build this up for several weeks now in fact i'm trying to get a group of people to go see this now the reason why i'm excited about this play is because this is the story of Michael Jackson's very controversial career, all told through the perspective of his iconic glove. Uh, right. Jerry, I believe you are playing the glove. <laughs> I'm the, the glove. Yeah. You, are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are the glove in the play. And, uh, you know, when uh, Jerry, I'm going to, you got to excuse my, my, my language here for a moment, but like everyone else, when I, I saw this, I, uh, when, and I heard the concept, and I even saw the, the the artwork for it, you know, I was I was like most people, like what the fuck is this? <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, yeah, I think that was what the creators were going for. The creator, yes. Well, they achieved. <laughs> they, they very much achieved. You know, not only is the is is there a a, a puppet of uh, of the glove, but mm-hmm. also there's a <laughs> there's like a a full bodied uh, Michael Jackson puppet. Of, I guess young Michael too. <laughs> from yes. The 60s. Yes, the young Michael. Yes. Uh, do you want to do you want to tell us more about this uh, this play? How this came to, how this came about, and how you uh, started to participate in this? Well, uh, it was written by um, a guy named Julian Nixberg. Um, he uh, wrote a play maybe like seven years ago, maybe maybe longer mm-hmm. than that. It's called the Beastly Bombing uh, that started here in L.A. and toured around the country. He was in Chicago. I think he was in New York for a little bit. And that play was about uh, two terrorist groups meeting up on their way to go bomb something. So it's like white supremacist terrorists and Middle Eastern terrorists, and they and it's like a love, love story. So now you get the kind of idea of the kind of things that, that Julian <laughs> likes to do. You know, he likes to do these kind of controversial subjects. It's a musical, and um, that one was kind of take off on Gilbert and Sullivan musicals with the patter and the kind of music that was in it. Uh, and this one is um, about like you said, like you described about Michael Jackson's glove and and his relationship to his glove, I call for the love of the glove. Um, and so it's kind of a um, an hysterical look, <coughs> hysterical and historical <laughs> look at uh, <laughs> Michael Jackson's life. Very comedic, um, it, but told through the eyes of the glove. And so you can imagine that it's kind of um, kind of I'd describe it as kind of a Sid Marty Croft if you're old enough to remember that. Those uh, live action kid shows. Oh, I I, re- I remember those, man. I, I yeah, it's a, like uh, HR Puff and stuff, and uh, uh-huh. uh, Sigmund and Sea Monsters. And I don't know if a lot of yes. kids remember this, but you guys should look that up. If so, I can very much see what you're going for with the uh, with the glove right there. <laughs> yes, so it's very much like that, um, but in, you know, a little bit more adult humor. Um, but the, the story is told very much like a you know a, a Sid Marty Croft. I, I like to call it like. Michael Jackson's story on acid, you know, it's just, it's just wild and crazy. And there's true things, true things that we take from the history of, of Michael Jackson, but, um, uh, but blown out into, into crazy proportions and, and made a comedic. Nice. You know, one of the things that I, I noticed, uh, with this play immediately is that you, uh, you have a great singing voice. Uh, oh, thank you. No, you you really do, man. Uh, you do some singing in the play, and I gotta say, mm-hmm. you uh, I don't know if this is what you're going for because I haven't seen the play yet, but you you sound like you do a a, a great Michael Jackson, as we'll see in this clip right here. Truth must be told. That is uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> that was my first. I have to tell people that was my first time ever singing that. That's why I'm reading and looking at the paper. 
uh, it's a lot better now. <laughs> it sounds great. It sounds great right there. You know, you as I said, man, you are. Uh, no, you can you can do it all, you know. Uh, and like I, I you, you, your your singing voice is great there, and you're doing a Michael Jackson thing, but you know, uh, you do all kind of things with singing. It seems like I know that you had this, uh, you had this uh, this R and B parody duo with uh-huh. Craig Robinson, uh, L Witherspoon and Chucky. Your L uh-huh. Witherspoon, uh, Craig Robinson is Chucky on keyboard. Let's take a listen real quick. I'm going to take a shower. Somebody's doing my lady. <laughs> you that that is great, people. Uh, again, this is we're talking to we're talking to Jerry Miner and Jerry Miner. We're talking about his play for the love of the love, where he does singing, and now we're talking about uh, his singing in general, which, as you can see right there, even in a comedic aspect is very good. Have you ever thought about outside of comedy? Have you, have you pursued singing in more, in a more no. serious way? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, love. I, I was kind of surprised at this one because, um, you know, I didn't really have, like, I wasn't known for being able to do an impression of Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. And, um, obviously Michael Jackson has a really high voice and I, I don't, I'm like a more of a natural tenor. Um, but, uh, you know, I did a little singing when I was coming up uh, doing theater and stuff. Did a lot of musical theater. It was in Second City, and we do a lot of songs there. So mm-hmm. I got a lot of experience singing on stage. And um, and in this play, you know, Julian saw me doing music like that. And, mm-hmm. uh, but but most of my music has just been for for comedic sake. I, I never want to put myself out there seriously. You know, <laughs> like you know, like Jamie Foxx can actually like really sing. Yeah. Um, but then I also like I remembered like Eddie Murphy's uh, <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> boy singing. I'm like I don't know, man. I don't know if anybody would ever take me seriously. Whenever I see Jamie Foxx is here, singing, I, he can sing. He's great, plays yeah. piano. But I'm like I'm always ready for the joke. I'm like, okay, when's he gonna like? <laughs> when gonna tell the joke? Like, <laughs> well, the other day we were just talking about uh uh. Eddie Murphy and Michael Jackson. You remember that video? What's up? What's up with What's you? Up with you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people didn't remember that, man. We did that. So <laughs> we well, know, know a lot of kids that- are like, what the hell is this? Wait, that was Betty Murphy's uh, thing, right? Michael Jackson did the chorus. And then he, remember the time Eddie Murphy was the pharaoh in the video. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, but no, you. Uh, I was just looking at that. And I was thinking, I mean, I, it's it's good to know when you have the talent for it or how far you want to take it. And there's some comedians I've seen where I say, you know what? No, there's no way they need to like go beyond this. This is funny. This is uh-huh. cool, whatever. But you, I mean, you have like real talent in, in, with singing, man. And you got real stage presence oh, for thanks. it too. So, you know, man, I, just, I wrote you, that you, song too. You wrote, oh, look at you, man. You're a writer. You're a yeah, really? great songwriter too. <laughs> yeah, a little music. Yeah, I held on to a little bit of like, you know, I was in music a lot when I was growing up. Um, it was one of the only things that I could do, you know, mm-hmm. growing up at school. So I was in music class a lot. And, um, yeah, I, I, just, I guess I held on to, like, the my knowledge of music and notes and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. No, no, like I said, man, you're a very talented person. And speaking of which, uh, being that you're a very talented comedian, of course, it was probably only, only a matter of time before someone like yourself would appear on Saturday, Saturday Night Live. Where you, you, you <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit, but because I'm very curious about Saturday Night Live in a certain aspect. Sure. And, you know, you, of course, when you were on there, you got to act along some, uh, some big names as your, mm-hmm. uh, your comedy coast. Like, uh, looking at this clip right now with you, uh, doing a morning news thing with, uh, with Jennifer Lopez. Well, maybe I don't feel like having friendly banter. Maybe I'm rough and tough and all that, yo. And I ain't gonna be taking none of the full stitch ass down. <laughs> you gotta be hitting on me all like that. That hurt. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, now, the one I wanna get to is Saturday Night Live, because if you saw my brother Saturday Night Live, you're like, huh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, with Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live, you were on there one season. Mm-hmm. It was 2001 to 2002, I believe. Mm-hmm. 2000, 2001. 2000. Okay, so you uh, you since you're on there for one season, what I want to know is if this is a hard question to answer, then you know that so be it. That's fine. But uh, mm-hmm. what's it like to be to be told that you're not on the show anymore? 
Well, that that year was a weird year because I, well, I got hired as a writer. Mm-hmm. And um, I was a feature player. They, they were kind of like thinking about, well, maybe you know, down the road, we'll want you to be a feature player. And I ended up writing a sketch right at the beginning of the, of the year, and uh, ended up getting in the show mm-hmm. on the first show. Um, but I guess the intent, Lauren's intent, was to keep me. Uh, he told me his intent was to keep me as a writer for a while, which a lot of cast members um, do. The Tina did that, and mm-hmm. you know, on and on. Um, but he wanted me to be a, a writer for a while, you know, learn the ropes and then maybe, you know, kind of get my way into the cast. And, and, and I had the experience of doing a lot of sketch comedy. I'd done this show called Mr. Show um, oh, yeah, before yeah. that. Um, so uh, I was ready to go. So I wrote, a, I wrote this sketch. You wrote this. <laughs> and, uh, and Eminem wanted to do it. Um, so I ended up being in the first show. And... Um, yeah, so that was it. So for me, it was kind of a whirlwind, like, oh, you're in it now. Now you're on the cast, and um, people weren't really prepared for it. I never had a dressing room because they didn't have enough dressing rooms because the cast was so big mm. at that point. And then that, the end of that year, um, I knew that they were going to be making some cuts, as they told us. And it was um, not just me. It was a number of people in the cast that mm-hmm. were thinking about, like, well, are they going to leave or not? Um, so by the time it, they told me that I was leaving – I was pretty much ready to to go back. You know, I didn't want to yeah. like spend the whole summer worrying about whether I was going to be coming back or not. And and it ended up being a, a couple of us. Uh, it was Chris Parnell and me. Yeah. Parnell ended up going back uh, after a year or two, um, and he went back on the show. Um, and I I actually went back and guest wrote uh, for a couple of episodes. So I guess for me it was bittersweet um I, I definitely wanted to stay but then i also had already had my roots in la and mm-hmm. i kind of wanted to get back home too so you know i was uh, yeah, yeah i was ready to go <laughs> okay so it's so uh to get told uh that you know you you're cut from saturday night live no no big resentment no 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 anger when you're leaving or anything like that well, no, I mean, um, I always have resentment and anger for, for, <laughs> for all the people I've worked for. Uh, yeah, but, um, you yeah, know, I mean, everybody eventually gets told, you know. I mean, uh, very few people leave, leave, leave like, people don't know that, but very few people leave on yeah. their own place. And they always get told to leave, and people are like, oh, man, it's only been, it's only been nine years, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, they, yeah, they have to, they tend to have to push people out of there sometimes, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, uh, speaking of uh, one season, and also you mentioned Mr. Show. I don't know if a lot mm-hmm. of people remember Mr. Show. Mr. Show with uh, uh, Bob Odenkirk, and uh, uh, I saw it's Bob and Dave. It's Ed, yep, it, uh, and uh, it is Bob Odenkirk, right? Yep, yeah, that's it. yeah. yeah. Uh, and it, that was a show that was on HBO. Made a comeback on uh, Netflix uh, not too mm-hmm. long ago. Uh, Jerry, I, I remember this episode that you were on. Uh, remember because I remember this this line that you did in here that had me laughing for years. I still even say this to say this to some people sometime where you're here on Mr. Show. Todd, right, can I say something? Of course you can. Sure. You are. You need to respect the baby because life is precious and God and the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> that line has always made me laugh, man. And God, in the Bible, uh, if people don't remember Mr. Show. Mr. Show is a sketch comedy show, also, but it was uh, where every the end of every sketch segued into another sketch. Uh, mm-hmm. You came in on the last season of Mr. Yeah. Show, so now being and that was before Saturday Night Live. That was was that 1998? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. when that happened. Yep. So you're on the last season of Mr. Show. So okay, you got to move on, and now you're on Saturday Night Live. Uh, you know, a little while later, mm-hmm. and then that's you're on there for one season. Was there a point where you're like, "Damn, can I can I catch a break?" <laughs> At all? Or was that just like, "Okay, this is how the business is"? No, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, because uh, I've I've been on a lot of shows that got canceled, and I tell people, you know, they all get canceled at some point. So, <laughs> uh, you know, except Saturday Night Live, I guess that's the only one that's kept going. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I knew that was going to be the last season as Mr. Show when I went and did it. You know, um, I actually did a sketch the first season, and I did that sketch for Bob and David. Um, actually, I shot it um, previous to even coming on, and they ended up using it in, during the season. Mm-hmm. So I was familiar with them even before they got the show on HBO, um, and I knew what they were going to do and what the show was going to be. And I ended up not. I, but then I was living in Chicago. I was doing Second City, 
And I ended up not live, live or moving to L.A. until the final season of Mr. Show to come and do that. So Nice. Nice. I mean, but you always stay working. So it's not like that. Anything, none of this has ever seemed to be a, a big obstacle for you at all. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's all relative, I guess. <laughs> well, you know, there's been times where I've made more money and less money and it probably doesn't, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't show, but you know, that it, it, it shows in my pocketbook. So <laughs> yeah. That, hey, that's what matters at the end of the day. Right. Well, I guess, uh, <laughs> as long as you're on the plus yeah, side really. of that, um, yeah, yeah. do, uh, you know, you've, you've had a lot of co-hosts, you know, through, all of the projects that you've done through television mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the, the sketches that we see here and the mm -hmm. programs you've been on. Um, for example, you know, uh, Mr. Show, we talked about Bob mm -hmm. Odenkirk, and of course we've seen Bob Odenkirk go on to like, things like Better Call Saul. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you, uh, you know, you, you, uh, you've, a lot of your co-hosts from Saturday Night Live have gone on to some big projects. Do you ever keep up with any of these people? Do you ever cross paths with them uh, at all? Oh, yeah. Everybody, you know, um, uh, I, see, I see everybody. So even Horatio Sands, I was just um, at his house yesterday doing mm -hmm. a podcast. Uh, so we're still friends. Uh, pretty much everybody at Mr. Show, we don't see each other, uh, each other as, we, as much as we used to. We all have, like, families and stuff now. But yeah. um, we were young and single then. But, um, yeah, you know, we're all in here in L.A. And we all, like, kind of live in the same neighborhood. <laughs> you know, I, see, I see people at the grocery store all the time. Like, I just saw Chris Parnell at the grocery store. I see him at the park, you know, with his kids. And Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, cross paths all the time. It's always crazy to me to hear about yeah. celebrities, you know, just... I know because I meant this is stupid because, you know, I mean, they're people. They got to eat, you know, they got to go outside. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's just weird to me just to hear you say, yeah, man, I just ran into, you know, Chris Parnell at the grocery store yesterday just chilling, you know, at the I park, know, right? you know. Yeah, I know. I wish people could know that. Like, it's just like everybody else. It's just like in any other city that I've lived in except, you know, and for, for other people would be like, oh, you work with that guy, you know, at the store or at the factory or, you know, in the office. And or we used to work together at State Farm and then I moved over here, you know. Um, and for us, I, I think our, our jobs are obviously a lot less permanent, but um, we still are friends in the same type of way. You know, we, we play golf and yeah. hang out. Yeah, nice. You know, yeah. Very nice, man. So that's that's cool. It doesn't seem like there's a there's a lot of envy or resentment among the group. Everybody's supportive of each other. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I was trying to put a positive spin okay. on it. <laughs> that's nice, yeah. yeah. Well, no, the envy is still there. <laughs> I, I like the way you look at me like, oh, Corey, ain't you cute? You little naive oh, son no, of a no. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, I think, well, you know, it's both ways. It was funny because um, when I first got to Saturday Night Live, um, mm -hmm. uh, Tim Meadows was still there. And we were yeah. kind of friends. You know, we were both from Detroit and we both done Second City in Chicago. And so whenever he'd come back to Chicago, I would always talk to him and we kept in touch. And when I got there, he was leaving. Um, and he asked me, you know, like, hey, what do you, how do you, th what do you think? I'm like, oh man, everybody's so supportive and, they, and nice. And he just laughed at me. He's like, that's not gonna last. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let me, let me ask you a hard question right here. Uh, and again, I don't expect you to like name names or anything, uh, mm -hmm. but, oh, is that me or you? I can get that off. No, that's me. Okay. Can I get that off? <laughs> so I'm asking you, how do I stop that? Is, is that one of the people you, is that, is that like uh, Chris Parnell or somebody? <laughs> Hey, you son of a bitch. I, <laughs> Are you talking I, about you me? You know what? I, I think it's uh, a uh, – I have my computer open. I think it's a uh, sales call or something like that. Oh, yeah. th damn. They got you so on I Skype? Po I apologize. They, re they, re you got, they reached you out on Skype? They do that now? <laughs> no, you know what? It was. I had my uh, laptop open and it was coming through there. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. All right. Yeah. Um, Hey, y'all, by the way, uh, if you want to have any questions for Jerry here, I'm talking to the chat right now. Chat, oh, man, uh, wow. yeah, no, yeah, I have you up. And, uh, I have, you know, you're doing the interviews. I usually don't go to you guys because that's just, you know, that's just rude. But if you have any questions at all for Jerry, uh, do not hesitate to ask. Uh, I'll let you know when to make those questions available. Uh, but we'll continue with the interview right here. And near the end, I'll let you know. Uh, as I was saying, man, well, this is what the, yeah, this is the question I was going to ask you. So, uh, <laughs> what I, I I said is there any envy or anything going on? And you just busted out laughing, and you said it's both <laughs> ways. Uh, anybody in particular that you you you're envious of at the moment? Oh, everybody! Yeah, <laughs> right now? oh, everybody, man. Uh, yeah, you know, it's all you know. 
<laughs> Jerry's like, but Jerry's like, man, I, I'm a petty motherfucker, man. <laughs> well, I mean, it's less petty, like envy, and more like I'm really admiring, like I'm really admiring Eddie Murphy. I always did, but I'm really admiring that he's making this comeback and um, and doing like, you know, um, original work. You know, I'm, I'm just really liking what he's doing right now. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm happy to see him again. I'm happy to see him, you know, doing comedy again and doing like the comedy that I kind of like and that that attracted to me and wanted me to be like him at first. You know, I just like try to uh, try to just mirror my career after him and and, and try to be as talented as he is and 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 not coming close. But um, I've always really admired him and and always wanted more. Like I always thought that he should be doing more. You know, I, I think he can do drama you know obviously he said he's multi-talented he can sing um yeah so it's not really envy like professional envy like i i really aspire for my career you know when i'm 10 years older he's you know older than me i'm still doing it as like he is now yeah it's funny you should say that too man i've always said he's a great dramatic actor and i would love to see him do more of that uh would you like to do uh more drama or would you like to do drama because uh, I, I don't know if i've seen you do any dramas have you done any big dramas in the past um, no, I mean, any dramas that I've been in are usually is like a kind of a comedic role, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I've been in some movies and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, I'm usually doing something either kind of lightly comedic or comedic in it. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, yeah, I guess so. Um, but it's not something I've ever focused on. Yeah. You know? It's more like if the like opportunity like, presents itself, then yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I feel like I get a lot of variety in the kind of stuff that I do anyway. That for me to like go completely outside of myself and start doing like soap operas, I'm that you know no. <laughs> but um, but I'm sure there's something out there that I would you know love to to get involved in. Yeah, you know, I I wouldn't be surprised if you did, man. I mean, you're talking about. Talking about you know envy and uh, you know how everybody's working. I'm looking at your IMDb page, man, uh, and I always do this with people. Who, are, mm -hmm. who have uh, a great resume or body of work. Like, I'm looking at your IMDb page. Look look how long this is, people. You stay working, man. You know, you, you well, are out yeah. there. It's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you, no, you... Uh, you are always, uh, you're always, you're always working, man. And you know, I mean, and like I said, you've uh, you've done a lot of television. I mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people. Younger people too, because we mentioned some things like uh, Saturday Night Live back in the early two thousands. We talk about uh, Mr. Show. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people might recognize you from uh, you know your as a janitor in Community. You got a gift, kid. You know that, right? A gift for sinks. Yeah, right. Learning, learn everything, learn until you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, that, that is a great. That's a great line. Man. <laughs> you, you man you were you tell you man you were you're hilarious your, your delivery on certain lines is uh is is amazing man you know that's, that's why you're out there working like that but you know my, my thing Thank is you. you know you do so much because you know you're so good how uh Thanks. how did you how do you find time to to do everything that you're doing and then on top of that go off and do this play uh this this year, I really had the advantage of being able to do some work um, beforehand that took uh, like a really compact amount of time. Um, I could uh, I did a a series um, right before this uh, that was I don't know what platform it's going to come come out on, but it's uh, one of your like choose your own adventure mm -hmm. uh, shows. Mm. You know, kind of like um, the Black Mirror episode. Um, ah. Where you know you can choose which way you want to go in it, and this one is about uh, hip hop. I don't know what it's going to be coming out on, or when it's coming out, or anything. But I shot that for a month, and so I had some free time. I was, you know, doing that, and then after I was done with that, I didn't really have to like, you know, get to work real soon, and so I had the time to be able to go into something in rehearsals. And this mm -hmm. also was like during the perfect time in between doing. Um, like I, I usually do a lot of uh, guest spots on television shows, you know, around mm -hmm. this time of year, and then that kind of dries up, you know, around Christmas time, and so that's that's what was that's when we were rehearsing this play, and then it'll be pilot season in the spring, around the time the play will be done, 
so I just had this pocket of time where I could do it. Yeah, you know, uh, so you, I, that's what I kind of figured. Like, I know that uh, this sometimes work can be seasonal uh, mm-hmm. for actors in, in, in L.A. So Yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, it, so it is kind of a, well, I use the word loosely, and I don't mean it in a negative way, but it seems like it's, you know, you, it's kind of a grind, you know, oh, to, yeah, keep, to continue yeah. to be a working actor mm-hmm. and while you're in L.A. Yeah, it's less the, that now because there's a lot, lot more opportunities. It's the more streaming platforms and stuff like that, or like that yeah. thing I was just talking about, you know, that's probably going to be on a streaming platform, and that's something that wouldn't have been available to me years ago. So I, I can say that there's a lot of there's a lot more um, opportunities for actors if you if you're well rounded, you know. Yeah. So if you can do theater and do movies and do a little bit of television, um, you know, if you can kind of be a jack of all trades, it can it can work out for you. Where you can. It's interesting to hear you work. also talk about you know being an actor. Uh, Hollywood, L.A. seems more like uh, we were talking about this before we start the interview. Seems more like a. Uh, an actor's town for television and movies. Yes. So to do a stage play in LA and already kind of track well, like you're doing is, is very good. Mm-hmm. You say- I mean, we'll see how it works out. You know, if we get, a, <laughs> if we get enough audience, you know, <laughs> that's another thing about LA is like get the audience because, because obviously in New York and Chicago and cities like that, I've also lived in Toronto and that's another big theater town. Yeah, um, yeah, people love going out to the theater. They love it. You know, really? even, I mean, even in Austin, I've been to Austin. You know, people they like going to see live stuff. You know, and it's um, uh, it's a tradition there. You know, it's in the culture. People like to go out yep. and see live music. I know in Austin, and they go out and see Esther's Follies, and uh, <laughs> you know, every time I go there, it's packed. You know, yeah. <laughs> no matter what people think about it, it's packed. But when I go to the comedy clubs, you know, in Austin too, like down the street, down, it's packed. You know. Yeah, you know, you're right, man. Uh, Austin is very much a, a – they say live music capital of the world, but I always tell mm-hmm. people it just means like everybody's kind of a shitty cover band around here. You know, people, people <laughs> yeah, play. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, theater is pretty big here too. You know, mm-hmm. that, brings to, that brings to question here. You know, this would be interesting. Let's just say that uh, For the Love of a Love, you know, really mm-hmm. takes off, which I hope it does. People see this January 25th uh, through March 2nd. I'm going to try to get a group of people to go check this out. But uh, – mm-hmm. Let's just say this takes off, man. Would there be the possibility of taking it on the road, like maybe bringing it to a town like Austin or going to Canada, going to Toronto? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, that's what he did with his last play, Julian, um, BC Bombing. And I think that they were around for, man, that thing ran around for seven, eight years, you know, because um, mm-hmm. it kept being relevant. You know, the like, terrorism just didn't go anywhere. <laughs> and this is the same thing. It's a, You know, it's an evergreen show. It's the story will be around, you know. Um, and I know that they're working on other stuff on Broadway. I think they're going to do it like a jukebox Michael Jackson show on Broadway. Mm. Okay. Uh, this is different. This is all original music. It's what drew me to it. The, the music is so good. It's really poppy and infectious. I have these songs going through my head constantly, but they're not the songs I sing. So it's like driving me crazy. Like I wake up with these songs. Like, get these songs out of my head. Man, uh, you know what? I can see that ever, ever since I watched this. This clip of you, uh, you singing. I, I have been going around the house. My wife has even heard me like this. Uh, like I'm about to take a shower or something. I'm in there like the truth must be told. You know, <laughs> it, it, it sticks with you, man. It really does. It does. It does. Uh, people. The writers were like pop, uh, pop musician writers. They've uh, written like a lot of stuff for Britney Spears, um, oh. for some other artists I can't think of. So they're they're pop uh, <clears throat> writers. You pop know? So, writers. Yeah, they. Um, do a lot of things in a musical sense, but they also have that sense of like, you know, the lyrics that repeat and and uh, and phrases that repeat and stuff. They just have that that pop sense that keeps you what they call an earworm. You know, that keeps yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. thing in your head. <clears throat> yeah, you know. Uh, oh well, people. Let me remind you again. We're talking to Jerry Minor. A lot of people even saw me play. Uh, I played that uh, clip of you from uh, from Community, and people saw uh-huh. that, and, and people are already yelling like. Wow, that's him. Oh. That's his guy. Oh, I didn't know that was him. Yeah, they, you know, my, pe- pe- my name is Jerry on the show, though. <laughs> you, 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 you know, <laughs> and that's what people. Some, some people in the chat were even saying Jerry on Jerry. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, man. Uh, you know, a lot of people they they recognize you, man, and they're excited to see you, Jerry. Mine, everybody. Uh, again, he's a uh, very talented comedian, actor, singer. I, I threw that in there. Has his uh, play 
for the love of the love going on January 25th to March 2nd. I'm trying to get some people in L.A. to go see this. We were talking about going to see this before I ever talked to Jerry. I'm very excited about this. This seems uh, this just seems insane. Uh, if you have any questions for Jerry, we'll have them answered as well as we can uh, right after we're done with the interview. We're coming up on the close of this pretty soon. But, Jerry, you know, we've been talking about uh, your career mostly. Mm-hmm. If it's okay, I'd like to to talk about uh, about you personally. Mm, sure, yeah, definitely. Uh, so you grew up uh, you grew up in Flint, Michigan, if I'm correct, mm-hmm. right? I uh, did. You had a. It seems to me, from what I've from what I've uh, you know, I've just met you. I don't know I don't know you too well, but it seems to me that you've had a very different upbringing than the career that you have right now. Yes, uh, uh, it was funny because you know in that clip that you were showing from Community. It kind of the theme of that episode was kind of what me, you know, um, Donald Glover. We grew up, we all both grew up Jehovah's Witnesses. Donald Glover did too. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the theme of that episode oh, is kind of what we went through growing up because both of us were encouraged not to go to college, <laughs> but to toilet seek a trade, and that's what um, a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses tell their children because they don't want them to. To go away to college and 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 get away from what they, they what they can or get into what they consider worldly things, which mm-hmm. is things that are away from the Jehovah's Witness religion. Um, and so that episode kind of dealt with that of him going like, "I can go to college," and me being a janitor, like, "Hey, you got the skills to be a janitor." You know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's that was so that episode was very personal for you then. Yeah, kind of. I mean, we, you know, both the writer, uh, the showrunner um, knows both of our stories. And I, I, I would imagine that he kind of knew that when he put that together, put the episode together. Yeah. You know what? The, uh, to hear about you talk about uh, your upbringing with uh, Scientology, you were on an episode of uh, Leah Rem- Is it Leah Remini? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Scientology and the Aftermath. Mm-hmm. Um, and you you re, you reveal a lot about your experience with uh, religion and um, Jeho- being Jehovah Witness coming up. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of kind of dark. Uh, if I can touch on this, you talked about at one time attempting to commit suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, um, actually, let me play this not, clip real quick. Uncommon. What's that? Which is not uncommon. Yeah, you, you let me play this clip where you 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 get very revealing uh, about this fact. Because um, I was always taught that this world was horrible and that uh, Armageddon and the end was going to be really bad. So I thought, well, my sin is paid for. I died. Wow. You, uh, so you kind of, it wasn't like out of a, all out of depression. I'm sure it was, but not all out of, out of depression yeah. and everything. But you kind of felt like I'll be justified in doing this because I am doing God's will by coming back a better person. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, and, and just to make things simple, I want it out, you know, I mean, it was just a hard, <laughs> a hard life to live, you know, and I didn't feel like I was doing what I should be doing. But I also didn't know a lot. I didn't know, you know, <laughs> really how to play the game, you know what I mean? Yeah, like how yeah. what people really actually do. And I was young and had grown up in it. So, um, yeah, yeah, that was um, a hard thing, but never had any experience like that since leaving, you know, Um I've never, <laughs> never attempted to any suicide after that, you know, um, and life has just gotten a lot, got a lot easier after that. So it was that, yeah. that form of life that was just too overbearing. You're free now. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I, like I said, I grew up in it, but I also had family my, my dad and my mom were divorced. And so my dad wasn't in it and I had family to turn to to get uh, another life that a lot of people don't, you know, a lot of people don't, mm-hmm. children especially don't have any choice to where they're going to go, where they're going to get support and, and stuff like that. And, and some people, you know, children do leave, but they don't have, you know, like I said, a family to, to back you up, you know? Yeah. I did. I had my family who weren't, who weren't Jehovah's Witnesses. My dad wasn't. You know, when you hear about people who, who come from uh, that, that, that life like you have, mm-hmm. uh, it, you you know you it, it I I wonder because I really haven't had a chance to have a discussion like this with somebody who's gone through this experience. Are you just leaving that religion, or do you find another religion? Or are you not religious at all? 
Um, I'm not really religious at all, but I go to like I, I've gone to church. I go to church with my parents, my parents' church. Uh, I really got an appreciation for the church that they go to, and had an appreciation for churches that actually do things for the community. Because my father is a member of an AME church in Flint, mm-hmm. Michigan, and man, that church just does so much uh, work for the disadvantaged, and especially in that city, they've done so much for for people for water, uh, and doing water drives, and they, you know they still um, regularly providing a lot of people in the community water. Um, they have uh, meal drives and stuff, and and seeing that being done in such a um, you know affected city, um, it really gave me an appreciation for what religion can do, in when done the right way, you know. And I think that that kind of thing is like really being, you know, kind and really looking out for people um, can re- actually be done. So it gave me another idea of what religion can be and it doesn't have to be negative it can be it can be a positive you know and, and in that way it's definitely a positive yeah like, so, i can't see how that's hurting anybody yeah so do you go to church at all not on a regular basis no i go when i when, when i'm with my parents when, when you feel like it <laughs> when i feel like it yeah, <laughs> if i wake up and i'm not tired i might go <laughs> i might go yeah like yeah. You know, I, mostly at home you know but um, yeah, yeah, I you know I keep in contact with them and stuff like that. So, but I definitely don't re- consider myself a re- religious person. Probably yeah. like most people no, yeah. nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I but you know, people who leave though, they I know people who are still religious who go. Um, I don't know if they necessarily they ch- say they change religions, but they definitely are not Jehovah's Witnesses anymore, and yeah. they go to a different church. I, I know people to do all types of things, you know. And, and hey, look, I'm not asking you this because I'm 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 not religious at all, you know. So, but I'm not I'm not judgmental against people who are too. I'm just curious yeah. how that works. I even have a question here from somebody. But I just do you consider yourself uh, spiritual still, or are you just like ah, you know, I respect it, but I'm done with it? Um, yeah, I mean, that's a good question because I do, I do still think about it. I I I don't. I say I'm not religious, organized religion, but I still read a lot mm-hmm. I'll, I'll read about spirituality um and what that means and and now for me that means i guess so many things you know besides you know going to church and listening to a preacher so i guess i still consider myself spiritual sure yeah. probably even more so you know when I, after i left i really felt like more connected to god this is immediately after i left than yeah. i did when i was a jehovah's witness just because of what i'd gone through you know, I was like, I tried to commit suicide and I survived. And I was like, I, for me, there was no way I could have done that without, without God, without there's somebody looking out for me. Yeah. I don't necessarily feel that now, but that's <laughs> what I held on to then. You know, so yeah, no, that's uh, no, that's that's a great answer, man. Uh, <laughs> so people, again, we've been talking to Jerry Minor, Jerry Minor, comedian, actor. Director, I mean, I imagine you've directed something. <laughs> I've directed a few things. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> definitely want to do more of it. Yeah. That's, I just threw that goal. in there, knowing, like I said, he has to have directed something. He does so much. Singer. Uh, <laughs> you probably seen him on any, anything from Saturday Night Live to Mr. Show, uh, 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 Community, several things in television. Uh, and now, as we said, you can go and see him on, in his stage play for the Love of the Love, January twenty fifth through March second. Go to the website right now. Get your tickets, people. We're still planning this big pilgrimage to go see this. You know, I'm gonna come all the way there to uh, to, to L.A. to hang out with you I'll guys. I'll look for you. Yeah, I, hey man. You know, I know you're busy, but if I I'll wave at you. <laughs> you know, say hey, sure. Yeah. It's a small place. I'll see you. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll come up and sh- I'll come up and shake your hand. I, when I shake your hand, though, I, I hope you're still wearing the glove right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, probably so. <laughs> uh, I have. Um, I have a, a question here from uh, in the chat. Let me go mm-hmm. ahead and pull the because the chat likes to see themselves. So let me go ahead and uh, and pop them out real quick so I can I can actually uh, let's see here I can actually have them see themselves when I ask them a question. Uh, let's see. I don't know if you guys your questions aren't showing yet yet because I just popped it out so nobody sees. Uh, yeah, what it actually yeah, is. Yeah, there are comments right there. Yeah, I just pulled it out, and it takes time for that to populate. But I, I do see them, and I see one here. Okay. Lyndon Stone, you, uh, you're always here, man. Thank you for coming in and participating. Lyndon Stone wants to know, how did you get out of the church? 
uh, Jehovah Witness, that is. And did you lose any friends in the process? Yes, um, I, I was kicked out. I was disfellowshipped, is what they call it. Um, so I went mm. to the elders and uh, confessed uh, my sins or whatever. And then um, a couple of days later, they came and told me that I was uh, kicked out. Um, and so their process of dis- disfellowshipping, most people that get disfellowship come back. But the process is that your friends, your family can't talk to you for the time that you're disfellowshipped. So if you if, if they deem you not worthy of, mm. of whatever, um, your family doesn't talk to you. So I didn't talk to my mom for most substantial conversations for 30 years. Um, oh. I have other family, uh, cousins. Um, and, you know, that partly um, with me doing that um, special with Leah Remini was me kind of reaching out to my mom because I hadn't talked to her for so long. and I didn't really know where she was. Um, and then she passed away uh, in May of this year, um, not too long after the Real Remedy thing came out. But I was able to talk to her a little bit a couple of months before she passed away. She was getting sick then. Um, and we were able to get a little bit of, uh, you know, catching up, but very little. You know, it was just basically just over the phone and text. Um, she got to see her grandson. But it really is a sad story that we went 30 years with no contact. And I, I really don't know anything of her life. I'm kind of trying to dis- construct that now, trying to find out, you know, what she's been doing, what she did for the last 30 years. Yeah, that's a very, very uh, important story that you're telling there, Jerry, because, I mean, a lot of people don't realize just out of uh, out of spitefulness and ignorance how much you can really lose, uh, especially with the ones you love, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's my mom, yeah. And we grew up, you know, I was, I was uh, an only child. Um, so I was her only child and yeah, because of that, because of this religious difference and I chose not to go back, you know, um, we just never had any contact. She had no interest in ever contacting me, um, never called me. Most of the contact that we had throughout the years, I would try to call and say, Hey, how you doing? And then it got to a point where she was just, she moved and I couldn't even find her and she had no interest in trying to get in touch with me. The only reason I got in touch with her before she died was I had some other family who are not Jehovah's Witnesses, but who lived in the same town mm. who told me she was sick. And then I finally got, got a hold of her. Wow. So you had to, to, you had to make the first move to get in contact with her. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Sorry to hear that, man. But you know, that's, it's an important thing, people, you know, don't, don't let yeah, you know, you I don't think people realize how, you know, how that can be. And the same thing is when people disconnect the Scientology, the same thing happens. You know, they lose contact with their relatives. And that's what a lot of people, that's what these people's complaint are, you know, that we're, we lost our family members to this, to this religion. And that, that shouldn't be, you know, uh, most churches that mm-hmm. you go to, you can still talk to your family and friends if they decide not to be a part of that. If they decide not to be a Catholic anymore. Oh, the Catholics are still going to talk to you, you know, but it's not that way in, in Jehovah's Witnesses or in Scientology, you know, and a lot of what I would consider colloquialism cults, you know, um, groups that are high controlled that have a lot of control over their members and don't let them do certain things, you know. Yeah, yeah. I have a question here. Thank you for answering that, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have sure. a question here from Edward Disco. Uh, he wants to know, Edward Disco says, what was it like to work with Cedric the Entertainer? Oh man, he's still a friend of mine. It was great. Uh, it was one of the one of the uh, most fun that I've ever had doing a show. It taught me a lot. I was a writer and performer on the show. Uh, I got to write a and what show was this? Amount of those sketches. It was called Cedric the, Inter- Cedric the Entertainer Presents. It was on Fox. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was two thousand three. It was on. Yeah. And uh, it was a, a sketch musical, a variety show. Cedric was the the host. Uh, it was a good show, man. I mean, that show was like, I wish that show would have stayed on. I remember, man, I remember uh, that show. Uh, it was on Fox. It didn't last very long. Uh, yeah, it was just a season. Yeah, it was a season that, that it lasted. And I remember that was uh, there was some funny things on there. I remember uh, they were talking, it was one episode where they would talk, says Cedric the Entertainer right there. You guys know Cedric. I remember there was one episode about a Johnny Rockets where you you know you go back to the good old days. And, oh, and, yeah, yeah. And he would, I don't know if you wrote this, but it was like going back to slave days. <laughs> uh, my friend Devon Shepard, who's a, is a big writer in, out here, 
Uh, he wrote that sketch, but we worked on it a lot together, man. That was one of my favorite sketches at the 50s diner. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, I, was, I remember that. That was funny, man. Uh-huh. Uh, Austinick wants to know. Let me see if, uh, let me see if uh, the questions are popping up for you guys. Ah, there it is. It's populated now. Uh, Austinick wants to know, uh, since uh, the play is about Michael Jackson, do you have any uh-huh. thoughts on the Michael Jackson and Eddie Murphy song? What's up with you? Man, we talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, man, y'all, y'all yeah, we are wild, talking man. about that, and we were saying, like, how I wanted to, he asked me if I wanted to be a, a musician. I was like, ah, uh, you know, I, I, that was the one thing that would stop me from, like, seriously producing or pursuing a, a, a serious musical career is because um, I don't, nobody took that seriously. Oh, <laughs> like, man, we of, played this the other day on the show, and people lost, uh, uh, people, uh, let me see here, what's, what's up? with you and i just type in eddie and that's gonna pop up i'm sure immediately yeah people if you haven't heard this we talked about this the other day played this uh video uh this thing is horrible <laughs> oh, oh wait oh go back go back let me see uh, uh i think i clicked something else i wasn't supposed to uh yeah here it is here it is y'all look, look the elephant this. is dying <laughs> You mean that you don't you don't want to be this, uh, Jerry? No, you don't want to. Do no. this? <laughs> I mean, I love to get laughs. What's that? I love to get laughs, but <laughs> not when I'm doing something. Well, <laughs> there were plenty of good laughs to be had from that right there, man. <laughs> you know, and I wonder, like that was green screen. I wonder if they were ever in the same room because it looks like they might have just like layered them together. Like, That's Michael a good Jackson question. Wow, I didn't even think. Of, wow, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wow, I didn't even think about that, that they probably weren't even in the same room at the time. A good possibility that they weren't. Eddie would have most likely at that point been in New Jersey, and Michael would have been out here <laughs> in, in Neverland, you know. They're just... been huddled in their own like thing, <laughs> in their mansions. Well, you know what? This brings up another question. I thought he was going to lead to something else besides this crazy-ass video, which is, thank you for bringing it up. That's hilarious. But do, do, you, how, do you have any opinions on Of course, everybody does. Uh, how do you feel about the whole controversy with Michael Jackson and uh, the accusers, you know, that they're out there? Do you, do, do, is this addressed in the play? And uh, what's your opinion on, you know, when we're talking about the, uh, the accusers of, uh, who have accused Michael Jackson of sexual abuse, mm-hmm. how do you feel about um, that? It's addressed in the play, but the play is, plays a comedy, and obviously that that's you know not the funniest subject in the world. So it's kind of brushed over in a in a really um, I should brushed over is the wrong word, but I should say it's most of the play deals with Michael Jackson before any of that stuff happens. So um, it doesn't deal with it outright. The play was written. I agreed to do it long before the uh, the HBO documentary, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that, you know, I was kind of worried because when the, the the writer had been after me for a couple of years to do the, to to do the show, and I was just like, all right, if you ever get it going. And then the HBO uh, documentary came out, and I was just like, well, that's not. We're not going to be doing that play. Yeah. Yeah. And I was surprised because a lot of people that are involved in the play worked with Michael Jackson at some point in his career. Um, there's some producers and stuff that, that were, that, you know, that, that were worked with him in early in his career. And, um, also some of the, um, uh, choreographers, it's funny cause, um, JLo was in that clip from SNL and, mm-hmm. uh, her ex-husband, uh, choreographed some of the show for us. Um, uh, Chris, uh, uh, and then, uh, he's going to be so mad that I can't think of his <laughs> name right now. Uh, but she was married to J Lo. Was married to him for a while. Chris, uh, uh, what is Chris's name? Anyway, um, he worked with Michael Jackson. That was his first uh, his first dance uh, experience uh, in dance. Was that he was one of Michael Jackson's dancers. Um, so there's people that were familiar with him and you know work with him and stuff like that. But I just assumed that we weren't going to be doing it after the HBO show. But then the, the producers came to me and were like, "No, we're still going to do it." And then looking at the way that they handled it in the play i could see where they were comfortable with doing it because most of the stuff is not during that time frame anyway yeah, so we yeah. really don't deal with it and the way they deal with it is in such a tasteful way that I, 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 it's hard to say that without being um without seeming like I'm, I'm just brushing over it and it's not uh but 
it's dealt with in the best way possible. And that's, yeah. that's yeah. I like to say, you know, without uh, giving away too much about the play. Um, it, I, I was really surprised with how well that kind of that subject is kind of like ah, it's there, but it, it, we really don't deal with it in the play. I should say that. Gotcha. Gotcha. It's not not the focus of the play at all. Yeah, it's more the music. The music is really the focus. Yeah. Nah, I, yeah. I, I know a lot of people are wondering that too, because a lot of people just assume, like, you know, they saw one of the pictures was uh, was this uh, this this boy in a wheelchair right here. <laughs> I thought a lot of people thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> uh, Corey Feldman and and, Cor- and uh, um, Webster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's <laughs> real name? They're in it. They are characters in it. Um, but yeah, that's about the most that you see any children in it. You know. Yeah. A uh, couple more questions, people, and then we'll be out of here. Uh, this is from Skull. Skull wants to know, uh, I don't know if his question is showing here, uh, but he says, uh, what was it like working on Beer League with Artie Lang? You know, that's a good question because Artie Lang is seen as a very destructive, self-destructive comedian in person. Yeah, and, you know, I, we're friends too. Uh, you know, I've stayed a little bit in touch with him over the years and since then. Um, and he was going through a lot of uh, things then that I, we didn't know. Um, had no idea that he was going through some of his addiction stuff. I, I think that was around the time that it kind of started mm. uh, heavily, his addiction stuff. Yeah. Um, had no idea, hung out with him. You know, we were hanging out all the time. You know, Obviously, we were filming a lot, so we really did. I had a great time on the, on the, uh, on the movie. It was really hot, and I was the only black dude in uh in that part of jersey <laughs> so I, in some ways i was uncomfortable uh with those dudes that we were working with you know because a lot of the, everybody was like from that neighborhood that he's from in new jersey yeah, yeah. so there were like all these italian guys and and it was to me it was like being in a sopranos episode because that's the way they talk <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it was a culture shock for me uh, but i i, I love the actually the actual experience of doing the movie yeah, the stuff that Artie was going through, I didn't know until after the movie was, was done. Yeah, uh, Artie Lang, I used to hear him talk about this uh, uh, this movie Beer League on uh, Howard Stern all the time. But if you know Artie Lang, Artie mm-hmm. Lang is uh, it must have been crazy for you to see what was going on with him. Artie Lang was just known for hookers and blow, man. You can see his nose <laughs> collapsed because he did. He, I know. I think a hooker gave you know we talking about hookers and blow. I think a hooker gave him cocaine with glass shards in it or something. So. He had that, yeah, and he also, I think the claps, though, I mean, that, that happened, too, with the inside, but he also got punched in the nose from a gamble, I think, a gambling debt, too. Wow. Jeez, this guy, yeah. man. Yeah, it's so, yeah, I was... Uh, it's, yeah, he's lucky to be alive, man. Yeah, so you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't see any of the wild side of him when you were working with him, huh? Um, no, not then. Um, before then, though, I mean, <laughs> we had hung out before, so I've had some pretty wild days myself. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not to that extent. But um, before that, we were friends. I used to I'd catch them when we were out. You know, I, I, uh, mm-hmm. I was out a lot uh, in my younger days. Um, and we would always run into each other, you know. So I definitely have uh, tipped up a few with him. But as far as, like, the deep stuff that he was into, I'd, I'd never, no, I'd never yeah. experienced that with him. And here's our last question here. Uh, and I'm going to bring up a quick clip from this so people will know. But I think people uh, they know about this. Uh, there was a show... Brickleberry animated oh, yeah. show. Let's see mm-hmm. here, um, Comedy Central. You mm-hmm. guys have. Uh, let me see. You guys have probably heard of this for sure. Yeah. This <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that cartoon. Yes. That's, that was, the, and that's the first. Episode that is the shot. first episode. <laughs> Are you uh, now? I never saw Brickleberry. Were you the black kid? I'm the black guy. Yeah. Is he black? <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, his name is Denzel. Um, and um, I was happy to say that ran on Netflix for a while. And, uh, thank goodness, man. I, those checks were nice because people were watching on Netflix. So, I, you know, the thing about Netflix, like you, you can kind of see how much people are watching stuff because you can tell by the checks that you get. Oh, really? And, uh, and so, how does that yeah, work? Yeah. You get so you get residuals from Netflix? Yeah, you do. Yeah. Well, that was bought because it was uh, actually that show was firstly uh, was uh, first for Fox, so Fox produced it. And then it got sold to Comedy Central. So, but this, the pilot we did was going to be on Fox, and then it didn't go to Fox. They did it on Comedy Central, 
and uh, and then Comedy Central sold it to Netflix. And so when it's like that, when it gets sold from a network, yeah, mm-hmm. you get residuals. If it's originally for Netflix, no. So I don't get the same kind of residuals for like Kimmy Smith that I did for for uh, Brickleberry. Nice. Which uh, well, I want to say that if there's any fans for Brickleberry, there's an episode coming up that that same team does another cartoon that's on Netflix now called Paradise PD. And there's going to be uh, coming up next month in March uh, or in two months um, a meld. Uh, what do you call it? Um, I don't know. What, you, what do you call it when you put two different uh, shows together? Crossover. Uh, crossover. That's exactly it. There's going to be a crossover episode of that show. So Denzel will be making an appearance. And there's a big surprise in it. I have to tell people there's a I mean, like a huge surprise that I'm really happy to let people know that, I, that you will not be let down if you watch that episode. Nice. Remind people the episode again where, and when they can find it. It's, uh, it's a crossover of Paradise, PD, and Brickleberry. <laughs> I'm going to look forward to that, man. Um, it's yeah, good. it's worth it. Even if you never watched the cartoon, I think you would like anybody that like watches it would be like, oh, this is amazing what they did. So, yeah, they do, uh, they, they're going to do something really cool. I would definitely be on the lookout for that. Uh, is there anything that you want to uh, tell people about before we go? Any projects coming up? Like, for, for example, this one, but anything else? Uh, that uh, was a big one. And um, uh, I still, I guess they're still running Historical Roast on Netflix. I just did that. That came out um, uh, last fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, I played Martin Luther King in the Martin Luther King episode <laughs> where he's roasted. Uh, he's roasted by Barack Obama, uh, <laughs> and, uh, Nelson Mandela. Uh, it, was, it was pretty funny. So Jeff, it's Jeff Ross uh, historical roast on Netflix. That's nice. Still running. Well, congratulations on everything, man. Thank you. Thank and, you. Thank you for having me too, man. It was really nice. No, this is a lot of fun to talk to you. Um, and you know what? I, I'm being serious. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to support, man. I'm gonna get a lot of people to try to buy tickets and want to come see the show. Uh, Thank you. And I want to say too, like if you got the Austin people listening, have me out there. I've never come to the comedy festival, and I and I need to be there. Uh, I've never come because, I, you know, but I think if there's enough people who are like, hey, every time I talk to people from Austin, they're like, why don't you come to the Comedy Festival? I'm like, because you're not demanded me. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so you talk, like, are you hey, talking about Moon Tower? Um, Moon Tower is one of them, yeah. And also, um, um, what's the, uh, the, the, not the Comedy Festival, but the, we do comedy um, where everybody comes out. Um, uh, uh, are you talking about South by Southwest? South by Southwest, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Moon Tower and and South by Southwest. Please uh, uh, ask for me, uh, hey. and, and I'm sure that somebody will be like, "Well, yeah, I can get them out here." <laughs> hey man, I'll, I'll try to push it. Hey, who knows? Maybe I'll get my own festival together and fly out. I'll, I'll pay I know. Yeah, here. get a sh- or you can do it like during that time. I, I would love to. I haven't been there. Man, it's been like ten years. I, I want to see those bats again. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, we we got a lot. You know what? I've been here in this town for like thirty years, man. I've never seen those damn bats. At all. <laughs> so, it's not that big of a deal. No, nah, well, tell you what, you come out, we'll go watch the bats, man. Okay, <laughs> be yeah, first for both of us. Definitely. Hey, yeah, Jerry, dude, well, thank you, you so much, man. This has been very thank nice. Thank you so much too, man. It was very nice meeting you. Yeah, and very nice to meet you too. And uh, you know, like I say, I'll I'll wave when we come out to the show, man. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Definitely. Keep in touch. I will, man. I will. All right, man. I'll let you go since you're busy, and I'll sign off myself here. Thanks, Jerry, and I will, we'll talk at some point, I'm sure. Thank you. Thanks for having right. me. See you. Bye-bye. Be well.